coming up on today's show. Stand-up comedian Mo Mandel is back to co-host. And he'll be sitting down with American Pie's Jason Biggs to get the latest on his political comedy grassroots. Plus, the Internet's favorite travel show host, Zach Anner, will go wherever you tell him. We'll have all the details in the feed. And Weston Scott heads to the skies above OFAST to blow up a car from a helicopter. <sighs> Guys have all the fun. Don't go anywhere. Attack of the Show starts now. It's, it's, it's hump day. It's it Wednesday. is hump day. Yeah. Happy hump day, everybody. We are Woo. midway through the week. Yes, we are. Are you doing anything exciting this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to be uh, headlining the Comedy Store in La Jolla, California. Do you want to... Look at you. Do you want to you go to the show? I wish I could, but I'm going to be out of town this weekend. Of course. I'm going to Utah. Ooh. No, it's not really a ooh, <laughs> but when you find out what I'm doing in Utah... I'm scaling a wall. Whoa. Yeah. How yeah. exactly? Like Spider Man. See, now this is the problem. People go to Comic Con and they get delusions <laughs> that they're actually superheroes. It's like this vacuum suction thing, and I'm I'm climbing three stories. Oh. And I am afraid of heights. Then you're doing So I the, might poop my pants. Okay. <laughs> Just we will warning. hopefully Just have warning. a camera crew there to witness that. <laughs> and it'll we be will. a great ATN. <laughs> Speaking of which. You wanna go around the net? I, I would love to go around the net. Okay. We're going around the net. <laughs> Wizard, the guy who did the science show in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great. Actually, no, I don't remember him being great. I actually remember him being kind of a jerk. Oh. What do you mean, not exactly? Can you well, see it or can't you? Well, you're right, but for the wrong reason. Sounds logical, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's wrong. Wrong. It's wrong? Wrong. <laughs> wrong. That's right. Not right. That's how I was wrong? That's how you were wrong. M I S S. You, you don't have to say anything. The computer is saying them for you. Okay. <laughs> I can't Don't help it. stop it. Get up. Stop it. Get up. Stop it. I can't get up. Yeah. Hey, wait till I'm through with you. You'll be sorry you said what you said. Before you leave today, your head's going to be on that platter. <laughs> Dad? Is that you? There's totally nothing weird about an old guy that lives alone and tells kids he's a wizard. Nothing. That's right, but kids, remember, if he pulls out his wizard staff, get the hell out of there! <laughs> Please, get out of there. Master parody artist Scott Gardner is back with another installment of his Portuguese Henson knockoff, The Tiny Puppets. Yeah. yeah! This episode, titled Summer Splash, includes a host of helpful tips on how to be a summer expert, just like the puppets. The Tiny Puppets is Summer Splash. Hola, somos los puppets. Estamos pegando un sol y relaxando al máximo. Esa praia es de más. No te mezcola, no verão. En tal, si você no tem casa, tire un chochilo na sala de aula. Pasa tu agens radicais con bronzadores. Plásticos de refrigerante para hacer cintos de peces bem legais. Peje. Peje Rania, Gaibotas, Medusa, Cavallo Marinho. Now say. Voce sabem turo sobre verão. En tal vistam suas ropas de praia e encaramas ondas. If you like the tiny puppets online, that's where you should stop. That's right. Do not rent the great. Puppet Caper. It is <laughs> arguably the worst Andy Dick movie of all time. <laughs> and there's been a lot of horrible Andy Dick movies. <laughs> Today we are celebrating the debut of Written by a Kid from Felicia Day's Geek and Sundry Network. This is so good. The premise is simple. Kids tell stories and then animators slay for months to make screen magic. Keep your eyes peeled for the mayor of geekdom, the director of the Avengers, Mr. Joss Whedon himself is in this video. Yeah. Oh, nice. 
check. What's the plot that there was a guy who was inside a truck who goes to houses and deliver milk and he's driving, but then a monster came. The truck got smashed in. What happened when he flipped the milk truck over? He died. The milkman died? Yeah. Then a squat team came. Was there a leader of the SWAT team, a captain? Yes. What was his name? Gerald. Gerald, he uses his sword, but the red-eye monster shoots fire at it, oh. and it breaks. What did Gerald say? I need to go back to the station and get more stuff. He shoot a fire, and then he threw in more fire at their uniform, then they had to go inside the shower for seven hours. On day seven, Gerald killed him with a sword and stabbed him in the chest. Then he pulled it out, then, then, then he was dead. And that's, that's the end? Yes. Wow. That's a great story. That is a really great story. Such a great story, but that was not at all what I expected. I know, right? I mean, yeah. the story, it doesn't follow Joseph Campbell's classic dramatic arc structure, you know? The, the script is laughable. And honestly, a cycloptic monster does not have the depth perception to strike down a milk truck, let alone the first try. It's um, completely unrealistic. But, but Mo, the writer is only five years old. All right, well then that's a violation of labor laws. D don't protect him, Candace, okay? You're setting a bad example. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude, it's okay, I forgive you. Hey, you know, when G4 rents a helicopter, look out! Anything could happen. Weston Scott takes to the air to kill the car. Coming up next. Now, Mike, this is a hell of a big helicopter behind me. Can you give me a little bit about its history and what it is? Well, Wes, it's a uh, UH-34D, built by Sikorsky in 1960, and it was uh, sent to the HMM-362 squadron in the Marine Corps as a uh, medevac utility evacuation helicopter. Despite the, all the killing you find in a war, we save a lot of lives, too. That's the main mission of this helicopter. So this is one of the actual ones that was over there in Vietnam? That is correct. This is the real McCoy. It has 54 bullet holes in it. They've been shot down twice and made it through the war. All the rest of them were given to the South Vietnamese, but this one happened to come back to the States. And then today, we got it at OFAS. That's correct. You got it here. Yeah, we're going to have a little fun with it. And I'm going to get to fly it. Uh, well... So, Mike, on the H-34, we have the engine in the front. That's correct. Open it up and look at this bad boy. As you can see, it's a round engine has nine cylinders. It is in there backwards because the prop shaft is actually going up between the two pilots. This is the back of the engine. A lot of uh, warbirds used this engine and Sikorsky liked it because it could run shot up and bring his guys back. So. Now Mike, I see this plaque that's on the side here, and I know this means something really important. Can you give me a little history on it? Yeah, this is this is really important to us. This is the helicopter unit that the helicopter was in, HMM-362, and these are the 33 men that lost their lives in Vietnam. So we've kind of dedicated this helicopter. It's kind of a flying memorial. There's a lot of these little square patches. These are where the, the helicopter was struck, correct? That's correct. As we start going towards the body up in here, it seems like there's more. And some of them were done, you can see they were done real fast, and some of them were done kind of nice. The fast ones, they had to patch it up that night or and send it out the next day. Tell me how you get into this thing. Well, you have to realize these things were built for a 20-year-old. Okay. 20, young man, thin guy, but for wait, us... Wait, wait, what are you saying, Mike? I, what, I'm yeah. not young, I'm not thin? Well, you'll, you'll, you'll try it first, but I'll show you how to I'm get done. in there first. Come on. Come on. 20-year-olds. So, Mike, M60. Bad boy. This is what I'm gonna be firing today. Yep. This bad boy, this is uh, 7.62, 5.51. That's correct, yep. NATO run, can fire close to 600 rounds per minute. Per minute, yep. Why this weapon up on the helicopter? I think that's what they had. 50 cal was too big. You just kind of keep the bad guys' heads down. So, we've checked out the specs on the weapon on the helicopter. Now it's time to see it in use.
you, Weston. I will now try to make sense out of this mad, mad world that we're spinning on. First, let's talk about drugs. You know, those, yeah, why not? Drugs, those things that help you fight off infection and see dragons more clearly. Of course, drugs are illegal, unless you live in Portugal. That's right, the great European nation of Portugal. It's that, isn't it the, 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 the place there that looks, uh, it's near London? No? Well, no, it, it borders the country made of an Italian shoe type pasta. No. Okay, look at me. I'm gonna be honest with you. I have no idea where Portugal is. Uh, let's just call it Europe's Mexico and move on. The important thing is, in 2001, Portugal decriminalized all drugs, from the things you smoke to the things you sniff. In case you're not aware, decriminalizing drugs doesn't actually mean that they are magically legal. It just means that instead of drug offenders being hunted down by the popo, a separate system of legal experts, psychologists, and social workers evaluates each case and decides on treatment solutions. So basically, imagine if your drug dealer wore glasses and was Jewish. <laughs> when this decision was made, people assumed that Portugal would become a hybrid of Amsterdam and the Moss Eisley Cantina, but of course, with more bounty hunters doing blow. <laughs> However, a report by the Cato Institute reveals that decriminalization has literally halved the number of Portuguese addicts. Not only that, but there's been a considerable drop in STDs and overdoses over the past 11 years. Now, aside from the part where decriminalizing drugs would mean the end of awesome drug shows like Breaking Bad, Weeds, The Smurfs, <laughs> whatever the hell this is. If you need a better car, go see Cal. He's the greatest one by far, go see Cal. <laughs> what the hell is that guy doing? That guy's actually a car dealer, which in case you're keeping track, uh, is way shadier than an actual drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> the world's sweatiest music festival is looking to cool off by setting sail on the high seas. That's right, Golden Voice, the promoters behind Coachella, have organized a music-packed cruise aboard the Celebrity Silhouette. The ship will leave from Florida and make two separate trips in late December, going first to the Bahamas and then to Jamaica, and because the ship is going to be captained by Hologram Tupac, it will also make a quick stop in Compton. Because, let's be real, Hologram Tupac is still Tupac, son. <laughs> I've been practicing that. Uh, the 1,000-foot celebrity silhouette can accommodate uh, 2,800 fans and even has a half acre of grass on board, to which the president of Golden Voice, Paul Tillette, said, it wouldn't be Coachella without grass. <laughs> he literally said that. <laughs> then he winked three times and made the universal symbol for smoking a joint. So, is this a bad idea? Yes, it's a terrible idea. Everyone knows that drugs and sharks just don't mix. Unless you're these guys. <laughs> Those guys get crazy high. But the Coachella Cruise isn't the only questionable public gathering coming up in the near future. In fact, not by a long shot. In 2014, Burning Man is going to be on an Airbus. <laughs> Then, of course, there's the much-anticipated Syrian International Jazz Festival. <laughs> Oof, that looks like a good time. And who's not looking forward to the 12th annual Gathering of the Juggalos? Combined with a... Yeah, which will be combined with a Gathering of the Buffaloes. <laughs> in conjunction with Slathering of the Ruffalos. <laughs> Look how many little Ruffalos they got there. That's a, that's a herd of Ruffalos. <laughs> Tickets for the Coachella Cruise are on sale now. They start at $500 a person, and they go all the way up to $9,000 a person. Yeah, so, you know, pretty much the same as the tickets were priced last year. That's a Coachella joke, which this crowd <laughs> did not really go for. Yesterday, bloated pill-popping land whale Rush Limbaugh leaned in towards his golden medal phallus and said this. The villain in The Dark Knight Rises is named Bane. B-A-N-E. What is the name of the venture capital firm that Romney ran and around which there's now this make-believe controversy? Bain. Whoa. Whoa. What? Limbaugh is using his incredibly powerful brain to claim that Bain, a character created in 1993 by Chuck Dixon and later almost ruined by Joel Schumacher in 1997, <laughs> was in fact created by a secret Hollywood cabal to elicit negative feelings about Mitt Romney, who was the former CEO of Bain Capital. And you know what? He's right! Oh 
my God, Rush Limbaugh is right. He finally did it. Woo! Oh my, oh, I cannot believe this day is finally upon us. It's true, comic books can tell us a lot about what's happening in politics. I mean, keen viewers of The Dark Knight would have been able to predict both the economic crash and the rise of, uh, you know, Michelle Bachman's career. Oh. That's actually, I'll be honest, that's the hottest I've ever seen her look. <laughs> Superman 2 showed us that Jimmy Carter was gonna lose that year's election. I mean, come on, Zod and Carter have the same beard and everything. <laughs> Plus, we all got a glimpse of George W. Bush's vice president way back in 77. Oh. And shame on us for not seeing Bill Clinton coming when Pepe Le Pew was chasing skirt. <laughs> A very tall piece of skirt, apparently. <laughs> Look, even Rush Limbaugh himself was foretold in Amazing Spider-Man number 32. You know, remember when Spidey fought the villain, Dr. Oxycontinpus? <laughs> Look at how jacked Limbaugh is, man. I mean, he must bench press his own bad ideas. <laughs> but he's right, though. This is an ingenious and fiendish plan, one straight out of comic books, or at least the 1960s Batman show. I wonder who could have foreseen this and made this crazy plan actually come to fruition 20 years later. Oh, I know who it was. How about Sarah Palin last night, huh? Eh? How about her, huh? Man, where does he get those beautiful hats? Still ahead, we will try to figure out if Batman is a Republican or a Democrat. Stick around, we'll be right back. Please welcome staff editor for The Hollywood Reporter, Jordan Zacharin. Let him know, people. All right. Jordan, thank you so much for being with us, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Okay, good, man. Let's, uh, let's talk about this Limbaugh situation. Uh, what do you make Please. of these accusations? Do you think the Dark Knight is actually a secret liberal attack on Mitt Romney? Uh, does that seem like something that's even at all plausible? Uh, listen, I think you need to give Rush a little bit of a break. He was all jazzed up to play the Penguin, and then, uh, you know, Nolan decided to make the villain Bane. Yeah, that, but, must, um, have, that must have been heartbreaking, because he, uh, Rush's size, he could have played three different Penguins, you know? That must have been... Uh, he was... You think he, he would have got gonna it? He was going to play the boat, too. Oh, he was going to play the yeah, boat think... itself. Well, I don't know. Yeah, to me, I it, think... it seems crazy, right? That's, that's not true. No, I think that... It would have been really impressive to go back in time to 1993, before Mitt Romney ever even ran for Senate, and said, you know, let's name somebody after the company that he works for. And in 20 years, when a movie and a new series comes out, he'll be the bad guy. It'll be perfectly timed. So that'd be really impressive. Do you, do you think, uh, aside from being Muslim and from Kenya, Obama also has a time machine? Is that possible? <laughs> Anything is possible with that guy. Anything. He's a fascist. Everything. <laughs> All right, well, if, if we were just gonna, you know, hypothetically, what do you think Bain's political affiliation would be? It's funny, you mentioned Chuck Dixon, who created him. He said earlier this week, he said, if anything, he's kind of an Occupy Wall Street type, but no spoilers. I've seen the movie, he's more of an anarchist, if anything. He pretends to be for the people, but um, does a lot of killing, which is not really a uh, good liberal position. So no. I'd probably put him in the anarchy, anarchy camp. Anarchy, no Green Party affiliations. That mask isn't made of soy products. I don't want to say Tea Party because that might get me in trouble. <laughs> not on this show, it won't. <laughs> All right, well then, there you go. All right, well, what about some of the other villains? I mean, what about Catwoman? I mean, she's, uh, you know, does she have an agenda? Is she a political person, you think? She's a spokeswoman for PETA. <laughs> Uh, oh, that, no, that that's woman. really on the nose. <laughs> you know, a little uh, steal from the rich, give to the poor type. She talks about all the rich people taking things. Yeah, that was in the trailer, so don't get mad at me with the, the spoilers. Um, so maybe a little, little liberal there. Uh, yeah. I don't know if she's running for office anytime soon. Oh, Batman is always an interesting you know, kind of person, if you think about it, because he's so rich, you know? We think of he's, him right. as being one of us and defending us, but he's a billionaire. I mean, sometimes I think that maybe Batman could do more good in the world if he just lived a normal life and gave all his money to charity, you know? It seems like he has billions of dollars. I mean, is he kind of like the Warren Buffett of superheroes? First of all, would you want to watch a movie about Warren Buffett beating up guys? <laughs> um, Me personally? No. Absolutely, yes. That's true. Him and Bill Gates team up. Ooh. No, I think that he's, uh, 
he's kind of a Richard Branson type without the without the personality, without the need to go to space. He uh, does a lot of charity, but um, it would not be fun to just see him go around and signing checks. That would be a uh, a movie about John Kerry or, you know, uh, you know, any of those philanthropists. <laughs> Maybe John Kerry could be a supervillain, the great borer or something like that. He goes around I, that I little swift boat the, uh, that he didn't Riddler. drive. Just confusing people as the Riddler. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he would. He'd be good for that. Is this the first Batman movie that people have, you know, questioned whether or not it has some sort of political agenda to it? Well, I, you know, all of Chris Nolan's movies in this, in this series, they're seen a little bit, um, not fascist or far right, but... If you look at The Dark Knight, Joker was under all the makeup and the Michelle Bachman smile. He was a bit of a terrorist. <laughs> and uh, Batman kind of tortured him a little bit, beat the crap out of him in uh, the jail cell, and uh, did whatever it took despite breaking the law. If you so look you at think any it was, superhero. You think it was a tip of the, uh, the Batman cap to Abu Ghraib in that uh, situation? <laughs> Unfortunately, Batman's the good guy in this. But if you look at any superhero, uh, they all break laws. They, they shoot people up. They destroy buildings. Of the Avengers, they brought down tons of buildings that are flying through the streets. Yeah, uh, I feel like the Avengers, people are walking around New York going, hey, thanks for saving my apartment that is destroyed now. That's really awesome. Yeah, basically Superman would be a multiple-time felon if you really took it that seriously. <laughs> okay, well, how do you think this is going to affect ticket sales? I mean, are people actually going to be like, whoa, uh, I'm a Republican. I don't want to see an action movie. I mean, how is this going to work? Well, the other big controversy with this movie is people giving it negative reviews and then getting death threats. So I'm pretty confident <laughs> that uh, that's not going to be a, there's not going to be trouble with selling tickets. In New York City, they're up to $100 on Craigslist. Wow, seriously. And, uh, okay, are you going to see the movie the first night it comes out? Uh, I will probably see it the second night. You liberal night. bastard! <laughs> I'm sorry, I jumped, I jumped all over it. I, I apologize sorry. for that. All right, well, listen, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Jordan Zacker, and ladies and gentlemen, from the Hollywood Reporter, let him know. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. All right, uh, we now go over to Candace. Thanks, Mo. Still ahead, Jason Biggs is here live to tell us about his host by adventures. And later, we see what Mattel's got in store for all you Batman fans. That was frightening. <laughs> well, it's time for today's news. This just in, we almost had a power outage. Yes, we did. But that's not all that's happening, right, Sarah Underwood? That is right. Right now, it is time to start the feed. All the news you need to know. The feed, feed. It's Wednesday, July 18th, and here are your top stories. Homeland Security is bringing out the big guns on the war on terror and is unleashing the trolls. A Silicon Valley veteran within the State Department has announced plans for a new initiative called Viral Peace. He says the program will target extremist forums, threads, and Twitter exchanges with, quote, logic, humor, satire, and religious arguments not just to confront extremists, but to undermine and demoralize them. The program's strategy is still in the works, but the objective is to dissuade impressionable youth from becoming terrorists by virtual geopolitical bullying. And apparently these are some high security hurt feelings as the White House officials have declined to comment. Now, not everyone is as excited for the Summer Olympics as you might think. A group called Brandalism is voicing their displeasure with the strict branding regulations for the 2012 games by posting satirical billboard ads throughout the UK. 25 street artists make up the Brandalism crew who vandalized 33 ads spanning five cities over a five day period. And they aren't finished yet. The group's website says they will reclaim an additional 20 or so billboards while the games are ongoing. Now, I'm all for street art and these pieces, they're seriously really cool, but you better be careful, guys. Have you seen the photos of London security? They have missiles on rooftops, sonic weapons, and patrolling teams of attack dogs. But um, on the other hand, keep sticking it to the man, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, starting later this week, residents in the state of Washington can register to vote simply by logging into Facebook 
and entering their driver's license or state ID number. Yes, Washington is one of 13 states that currently offer online voter registration, and the integration of Facebook seems like the next logical step to enticing younger voters and making the process even simpler. So, Washingtonians, sleep sound at night knowing you're giving your personal, private data over to a reliable company known for protecting its users' privacy. Oh, wait. They do the opposite of that, don't they? Shucks. And finally, comedian and viral phenomenon Zach Anner is still rolling Take That Oprah. His new show, Riding Shotgun with Zach Anner, will feature eight locations chosen by Redditors. Yes, from morning to midnight on July 23rd, you can visit reddit.com and submit a location at the official Zach Anner AMA. Here's a look at some of the action on Riding Shotgun with Zach Anner. Zach Anner, and I was just terminatoring into this field to tell you guys about my exciting new travel. Oh my god! Oh, I'm naked! Oh, no, you oh, It might begin with bird watching at sunrise. The majestic North Atlantic Elijah Woodpecker. Or dancing? Got it? Yes! Okay. Or even sailing. videos on the road and the full show will debut on Zach's YouTube channel once his travels are complete. I am Sarah Underwood and you have just been fed and now to celebrate the Dark Knight Rises Candace went to Mattel to check out the latest Batman toys. You wanted me. Here I am. The Dark Knight Rises is finally here and thanks to Mattel you can recreate the action with their latest line of collectibles. Of course you're gonna have to take them out of the packaging first. This may hurt some of you more than it hurts me. Now, Ruben, can you tell me about this line we have here? Yeah, so this is our Movie Masters figure line. So you get your Alfred, mm -hmm. first time ever in the line, and Bane, obviously the big bad guy. If you look at the detail, it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. We have a continuation of our Batman figure, as well as Catwoman, and last but not least, Officer Blake. So this is what you start with, right? And then yes. you make this from this. Yes, this is a two-up. You want to be able to get all those really great details, and the only way to get them is at a larger scale. Yeah. Each one of these figures is $14.99 retail. Now, there's just five? There's six, actually, and the sixth one is super top secret. Each one of them will come with an individual piece like this, so when okay. you buy all six figures in the line, you'll be able to create the bat signal. And it turns on. So these are our quick tech armor figures. They're $9.99, and what you do, you get a case. Each one of them comes with a figure. Uh -huh. Slide your figure back in, eject them out, and now he's instantly armored up, ready to kick that. some butt. We didn't forget about Bane. Once again, Bane figure, pop him back in, pop him out. He has Iron Fist of Fury. Whoa, wait a minute. What? That was easy. <laughs> that was so easy. So tell me about this big daddy. Well, this is the bat. This is the featured vehicle. It's gonna be $29.99 retail. I think I know how to use this one. Okay. This is the gun. This is the missile. Now here's the cool part. Yep, here's Batman. Okay, so this is an extension of our Movie Master segment. This is a larger scale figure. He's eight inches tall. So what we've done is we've eliminated all of the seams and joints that you get in a traditional action figure. If you see this figure here, there's an endoskeleton that fully articulates the figure inside of it. It's made like this, and then this is the finished product. Yes, that's right. That's fully painted, decoed. How much is this? That's $24.99, and it's only available on our Maddie Collector site. Okay guys, take a good look. This is the end of Chris Nolan's trilogy. The Dark Knight Rises. Go out and get it. Stay tuned, the star of the comedy Grassroots will be here live. Jason Biggs is on deck. All right, Jason Biggs stars as a dissolution journalist in Grass Roots. Grass, grass Roots, that's the way a human being says that word. Uh, this is a movie about a dissolution journalist who has sex with a pie. 
No. You're not happy with us. Okay. We're not happy with you. I'm sorry, but uh, how do you know I'm not happy with you? I read what you write. It's between the lines. You're firing me for subtext. You're not being constructive. I don't find this to be a very constructive experience. <clears throat> Let's not burn any bridges, Phil. All right, <clears throat> welcome back to the show. Jason Biggs is here! Jason! This aggressive handshake. Yeah. Are you drunk? I am so hammered I right now. Dude. Oh, me and you, grass bro. Grass shroots. Matter grass shroots. Congratulations on the new yeah, movie. The good thing about doing a live show <laughs> is that when you slur, everyone sees it. It is awesome. Well, listen, man. Uh, it's very exciting to meet you. It's exciting to meet you too. I, you're doing. You're the show is great, man. You're if this fun? interview continues as it is, I'll be fired by the end of the interview. But, so yeah, before, yeah, <laughs> before you we know sign what, just, off. Why don't you just? This movie looks Ooh. awesome. It's about. Yeah. Politics. You yep. uh, have some star power yourself. You ever thought about uh, getting in the ring, doing political icing? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think so. I, I'm. I'm. You know, I've. As it is, I'm. I've got so many insecurities and so many issues. The fact that I'm even an actor and I put myself through the hell that is acting, is uh, is insane. So it I don't, seems I don't like think the character Jim my... is a big stretch for you, then. Yeah, huh? huge stretch. Huge That's stretch. Really impressive. Yeah, I don't think I could run for office, no? man. I, I also don't know what like platform I would run on. Yeah, like um, literally physically. Physically, like what platform I would have you to would stand have to on. You would have to be a I'd stage probably, of some kind. I would, because I would have to be on a stage, of course. It would be better than if you were behind a curtain and people didn't know who they were voting this for. This is very true. Yeah, Wizard of Oz style. Yeah. Know, well, when can we see Grassroots, man? When is when is the nation we all take this in? Well, it's uh, uh, it's uh, open in Seattle and Portland and uh, <laughs> the cinematic hotbeds of of Seattle and Portland. <laughs> so if you're a hipster, and, uh, yeah. you can watch this movie. Yeah, exactly. If if you own flannel and yeah. like food trucks, you can you too. <laughs> <laughs> can see this movie uh, and it and it just opened in New York okay cool. and then it's going to uh, open nationwide or on a, on a larger scale as it gets closer to the election so it'll be rolled out and, and VOD as um, uh, which I don't know what that stands for. Yeah, I have no idea what you just um, said. But, but, but... Uh, uh, closer to the election in like October. Okay, yeah. awesome, man. Apparently there's an election. Not that I've heard this of. This year, I don't no. know. My, the publicist said, say, as it gets closer to the yeah. election. And I'm like, I, okay. As far as I can tell, we just have like some sort of a shooting contest. And then mm -hmm. we eat a cheeseburger and the nation advances for uh, six more years or something. Yeah, yeah six years. That's right. <laughs> okay, good. I was nervous I was wrong, but you've made me feel secure in my judgment now. Nailed it. <laughs> so now, you just got back from Comic-Con, right? Were you yeah, down I did. there? You were promoting Teenage Mutant yeah. Ninja Turtles? Yeah, nerds. <laughs> All right. How, you're dressed like a little Ninja Turtle. You got some green on there. I got some it's green. Impressive. Yep. Um, I, uh, it, yeah, I, I went to promote Turtles and... Um, uh, the TV. Sh no, I, just, I just went for the, <laughs> just the cause. To promote of, turtles. Just, to, I was like, you know, guys, I'm just a fan of turtles. <laughs> Not even the show. No, just if you're a down, reptile, you got a like, shell. You, Biggs yeah, is for you. Yeah, I'm there for you guys. You so know. I saw the last time you're on the show, you were talking about a sort of fecal incident yeah. um, that happened at Comic-Con last time. Was there any kind of a dietary thing well, that happened Well, the fecal there? incident didn't happen at Comic-Con. I, I told the story the last time I was here. Yeah, it, it happened actually when I was uh, when I was in Europe. I uh, I pooped the floor of a hotel, but now... But at least it was in Europe. It's like a classic yeah, yeah. poop incident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Europe, no, you know? they expect it. It wasn't like in Burbank. Yeah, no, you're like supposed to. You pay for it when you when you pay for it's the hotel room. It's almost how the you, French yeah. say hello to their mothers, I think, right? They just uh, poop yeah. on the carpet. Yeah, I'm French. How dare you? <laughs> you know I'm what? not French, I but I do have a mother. So how dare you? Oh, again, how dare me? I'll tell and you. My what? mother poops. You are oh, dis. You are I'm the just going to leave now. You I'm are the leave rude. Now. Get out. You're I'll fine. tell you something I did learn about you, sir. What's that, that? I was disappointed about. What's that? You're not Jewish. I'm not Jewish. Why would you choose to look like that if you didn't have to? I, I tell you, trust me, I, it's not my choice. How could you not? Did your mom have a bagel for a Nuva ring? How exactly? Maybe. I, I think she had an affair with a rabbi when I was a kid it, or something. This is me I off, really know. as a Jewish actor, there's enough competition. I don't need Italians pretending to be Jewish actors. I'm sorry. Hey, maybe there's a nice little Italian part you could... Do you think so? No, never. You could never. Damn it, Biggs! There's, there's really no way. <laughs> and the fact that you, you think your competition with me is hilarious. Uh, oh, my. I will. 
Well, I listen, was. I tell you what I can not compete you in. Up top, guys, that high five means it's all good here on the West Coast. Uh, I'll tell you what I cannot compete with you with, and that is dancing. I saw a video you did uh, yeah, online. Yeah, this yeah. is a, a YouTube clip. You guys got to check this out. This is Jason doing what I assume is not a real audition tape for Magic Mike. What do you mean? Well, I'm just going out on the limb here. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Look at how shorn your chest is, sir. That's... Yeah. Okay. I, bo I borrowed... Whoa, oh, yeah. whoa, whoa. Look at that. That is, yeah. a, that is known as the Biggs Banana Sling. You can buy that on his website. Yeah. I borrowed... I borrowed... Uh, oh, wow. Thank you. That is I disgusting. Borrowed, I borrowed the torso of a 10-year-old girl for that audition tape. That's actually. fantastic. Did it come with any other parts of the 12-year-old girl, or was it just a torso situation? You're, you're going to go to jail at the end of this interview. Well, horrible. for being drunk on national TV. I, yeah. Yes. I, um, yeah, no, that was, my, I, I just, I, that was my audition. And didn't get it? I didn't. Believe it or not, it was between me and McConaughey, though. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I guess it was a hair thing, because I'll tell you, you rocked that <laughs> thong, girl. I thonged the thong, thong, thong. Okay, yeah. I've seen your Twitter, and uh, so apparently you're all over the... Uh, if you're not dancing naked, you're mm -hmm. tweeting. Yeah. You're doing a lot of Biggs online stuff. Well, that's what happens now, right? This that's is the what world you we do. live in, but it seems yeah. like all you do is tweet about The Bachelor. Yeah, I am. Um, that's I'm, also the twelve-year-old girl in you. Yeah, I exactly. Guess out. <laughs> exactly. I love the Bachelor, Bachelorette. I, right. Yeah. Woo! Candace is excited about yeah, that. Yeah, Candace, we we love it. My wife and I, we live tweet it every Monday night, and um, yeah, it's just uh, what a what a train wreck th that is. Yeah. I mean, sounds like my kind of show. Yeah, no, it's totally. I mean, it's just you just can't take your eyes off of it. How you do know? you think you would do? Do you think would you like to be in that position? Thirty women, you come out, ladies. I mean, do you think they would be excited about that? You're talking about my everyday life, bro. I'm sorry. I, again, I keep uh, forgetting this. Yeah. When what are you, you can talking dance about? like an uh, yeah. a, a aerobic yeah. stallion, chicks no, are I, after you. Yeah, I think I would. Um, no, to to be perfectly honest, I think I would win. Really? Yeah. No, I would win it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know, man. I think it'd be funny if I went on. I think I should go on. You know what? Can, I, we, can we announce your candidacy? Because just to bring yeah. it back to the politics, that Jason Biggs is running to be on The Bachelor. Yeah, that's yeah. my platform. That's his platform, that's Jason platform. Biggs. <laughs> Woo. Listen, Grassroots is coming out. See that? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a new series with this man playing Leonardo. Leonardo. Leonardo, it's coming in December. And uh, that premieres September 29th, so check that out. Jason, so wonderful to meet you oh, again. Good. 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 All right. We now go over to Candace. Jason, I would totally watch you on The Bachelor. Thank you. Would you date me on The Bachelor? Absolutely. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> well, Comic-Con is coming, God. There is still time to attack some of these Comic-Con leftovers. may have been a bit over enthusiastic in his quest for science, but there is no denying that some great things came out of Arbiter Labs, namely the handheld portal device. Brought to life by the craftsmen at NECA, this authentic replica of the highly scientific doodad has blue and purple LED lights as well as sound effects pulled directly from the game. For the full effect, grab the unisex jumpsuit and socks based on the long fall boots used by Chell in her struggle to escape Gladys. You're sure to feel right at home in the Aperture Labs after buying the complete portal set for around 250 bucks. Yeah. Potato battery not included. I know. After seeing the smash box office hit the Avengers, who wouldn't want to have them guarding their abode? Right? I know. Well, now you can with these new Avengers figures. Created by Sideshow Collectibles, these one six scale superheroes will protect your home from tiny Lokis. The gang's all here from stoic Captain America to the high-flying Iron Man. Curl up with your very own Black Widow for around 190 big ones. And finally, Comic-Con isn't known for its musical instruments, but PV's Marvel electric guitars are set to change that. Covered in some of your favorite Marvel superheroes, these officially licensed guitars feature a basswood body, maple neck, and rosewood fretboard, providing excellent playability and tone for musicians of all skill levels. Shred like Wolverine with one of PV's electric guitars starting at 140 bucks. Yeah. Stay tuned, we're going off-roading for today's epic fail. Yeah. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Butterfinger. The end is near. Go to facebook.com slash Butterfinger to see how you can become Butterfinger's last spokesperson.
Bust out your iPhone because Swackit is a must-have weather app. Swackit converts complex data into visual weather reports that feature peeps. These are people symbols who always appear properly dressed for the weather. If it's cold outside, peeps are dressed in winter hats and a jacket. If it's a hot day, they'll appear wearing shorts and sunglasses. The app also reminds you to bring an umbrella or wear sunblock. And it's not just going to tell you what to wear. The app also suggests activities that take advantage of the day's weather. Swackit also provides 24-hour and 5-day forecasts, plus satellite imagery if raw data is your thing. Now you'll always be prepared rain or shine with Swackit, available for free in the iTunes App Store. Tomorrow on Attack of the Show. Whip out your capes, Tiffany Smith sits down with Christian Bale, Anne Hathaway, Christopher Nolan, and the rest of the cast of The Dark Knight Rises. Then on Gadget Prime, Matt Meyer gets his hands on Toshiba's new Android tablet, the Excite 7.7. And we delve into the creepy depths of the internet with the Smut Cave Spelunker in Who's Who on YouTube. It's Attack of the Show tomorrow at 7. proper safety gear, all-terrain vehicles aren't as dangerous as people make them out to be. But if you're dressed like a bug-eyed blue furry, they are <laughs> four-wheeled machines of humiliation. It's time for today's epic fail. Epic fail. Crashing in front of all those people or not dying afterwards. <laughs> yeah, a blaze of glory, more like blaze of snorey. Wow. Oh, I said it. No, I you did it. Did I did it. Girl. Fail him, slash possibly her. Do it. I think we should take a little look at the Twitter wall real quick. What do you think? Yeah. What do we okay. got on here? MK System 74. Tell Candace Bay 5 that you do not take the toys out of their original packaging. Whoa. I have never understood that. If you got a toy, don't you want to play with it? No. It's not fun to, I know y'all don't think so, no. but I think so. The idea of having a toy is something that you can just Look guard at? and not use or enjoy, and you just sit there and make sure no one chips your Darth See, Vader. Uh -uh. Guy. I want to like be able to move its arms around and do leaps and like whatever. Well, first of all, if it. you're making the yeah, action figures do leaps. Figure. I always do that. I always see how, how much the, they can uh, split their legs. Do you have like the Brian Boitano <laughs> action figure set or something? Yes. Okay, good. Well, how about this one? Who would, it's our silent. Who would you rather have read Fifty Shades of Grey to you, Batman or Bane? Batman! You can't understand Bane! <laughs> Batman has a deep, sexy voice. I would like to have Bane read me the Harry Potter stories. <laughs> I mean, would you? Yes, very much so. <laughs> okay, maybe we can arrange that. Can you please? We'll see. Right. Thanks to Jordan Zachary.